So, Toby Young, is that, is that a fair point? It's a real broad brush. You can uh, use the term cancel culture to define virtually anything. Well, I think it is used quite broadly, but I think the reason it's used more and more frequently is because there are more and more people who are becoming victims of cancel culture. I mean, of course, there are some people who uh, are, are attempts to cancel them are made and they survive, like J.K. Rowling. But for every one that does survive, there are at least 100 uh, who suffer, who are penalised, who lose their livelihoods, their careers. I'll give you one example. Um, a, a member of the Free Speech Union, Nick Buckley, set up a fantastic charity in Manchester called Mancunian Way in uh, 2011, works with disadvantaged young people in Manchester, a lot of homeless people. Um, he wrote a blog post a couple of months ago uh, making mildly critical points about some of the uh, policies of the Black Lives Matter movement. For instance, he didn't think it was a good idea to defund the police. Uh, but because he'd written this blog post, a petition was started on change.org calling for him to be fired from the charity that he himself had set up. And he duly was fired by the trustees. They immediately caved into this online outrage mob. Another example, Gillian Phillip, a very successful author. She tweeted, I stand with J.K. Rowling when J.K. Rowling was subject to a string of unspeakable misogynistic abuse just because she uh, challenged some aspects of the trans lobby. When she tweeted, I stand with J.K. Rowling, she lost a two book deal. That kind of thing happens again and again. And for all the high profile examples of people who really are cancelled, think of all those people who are self-censoring for fear of being cancelled. There was a if survey. People, if people have a fear people, of a backlash, should they perhaps rein in their comments somewhat? Still speak out, but perhaps not to such an extent. Well, it depends what you mean by rein in and uh, how you're defining speaking out. I mean, I'll give you an example. Suzanne Moore, um, a Guardian columnist, wrote a column in which she uh, took issue with some of the more dogmatic demands of the trans lobby and 338 members of staff, writers at The Guardian, including Owen Jones, wrote a letter denouncing her, denouncing her for her anti-trans views. And I'm afraid that's the way these people operate. If you don't sign up to every jot and tittle of the woke agenda, you're a transphobe or a racist. Suzanne Moore's about as far from a transphobe as it's possible to be. She was just politely disagreeing and pointing out that there were some conflicts between women's rights and trans rights in areas like women's only sports and changing rooms and whether trans women should go to women's prisons. A perfectly legitimate point of view doesn't make her a transphobic bigot, but according to Owen Jones and his pals, she had to be denounced because she had anti-trans views, and those views were making people at The Guardian feel unsafe.